Hey, I'm Avalon. In my recent livestream we did another bracket tournament with no legendaries allowed. And I'm gonna show you in this video the best battles of that tournament, which is in the semi-finals and the finals. Let me explain you the rules very quickly for this tournament. It is a no legendaries tournament. And that means you are not allowed to use legendaries, but every other card is allowed. And you're also allowed to change your deck between battles, so that is okay to change a deck between battles. There are 16 participants in the tournament and yeah you had to join the tournament at the start of the live stream. And up to the quarterfinals we played the knockout mode that means basically one victory you're still in, one lose and you're out. And the more damage usually wins and in the semifinals and the finals it was best of three. And we show all of those battles in the live stream. What I'm showing here is the very first semifinal it's Chad against Caleb. In their first battle. And Chad drops his guards very early there. Probably because he had nothing else to drop at that moment. It's usually not advised to use the guards for attacking. Uh, Caleb pushing with the Hog Rider. And a nice defense there with the P.E.K.K.A. Actually the Hog Rider is not able to do any damage to that tower. And on the other side that giant, that poor little giant. That happens to me very often. When I drop the giant early and the other guy has an inferno tower, that inferno tower will just melt that giant away. If there is no other support to either distract the inferno tower or take down the inferno tower like a goblin barrel or a miner, something to throw at that inferno tower to take it out on time, it will just melt the giant. Another way would be to surround the giant with a skeleton army or something like that. And now let's watch the second defense against that left tower. Another Hog Rider poison attack. Nice placement of the poison. The Hog Rider can do some damage. That tower is already at 1366 now. Mini P.E.K.K.A. running all alone. Look at the Fire Spirits. The Fire Spirits actually able to kill a Mini P.E.K.K.A. So that is something to remember. The Fire Spirits uh, very helpful to defend against a single Mini P.E.K.K.A. They will take him out immediately. And there comes another giant all alone and I'm pretty sure I'd say Caleb will counter with another Inferno Tower. This time there is a wizard behind that giant and an ice spirit and there's the Inferno Tower. Inferno Tower going directly for the giant melting it down and since there is no zap the giant will just die and the mini P.E.K.K.A. also helpless against that Inferno Tower. And there's another Hog Rider push this time defending with a prince. Hog Rider going for the left tower and takes it down. And Caleb is one tower ahead in this battle. And there is another giant. He doesn't know how to attack that Inferno Tower. It doesn't work. Again, the giant melts away and everything else also melts away. He get, doesn't get near that tower uh, at the moment. So Now Caleb attacks the other tower on the right side. And going against that tower, doing damage there. There is another giant, but again, there is that inferno tower just melting the giant away. And the giant is gonna die very, very quickly, and the match is over. And so Caleb wins the first semi final match, and it's 1 0. Now let's go into the second battle. Again, Caleb against Jad in the semi-finals here. Caleb throws some fire spirits very early there, maybe to get rid of them in his deck. And then attacks with an ice spirit and minions, which is very, very aggressive. And they get nowhere near that tower, uh, which was to expect. And Jad again, he throws a giant. Maybe he thought of something new in this battle, I don't know, we're gonna see. There's another Hog Rider Poison Push. Hog Rider doing damage again. Look at how much damage the Hog Rider is doing. Uh, that tower is already at 392 almost down. But this time actually the giant reaches the tower. The Inferno Tower was a little bit late. That's probably because Caleb was very aggressively pushing at the beginning and actually the giant manages to take out that tower with the help of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the wizard and now there is also a prince behind the giant look at the damage they're doing to the king tower king tower going down very quickly 
print and there is a three crown victory chad wins the second battle really fast with a three crown three crown victory and now it's one one and they will go into the third battle because it's best of three caleb taking out another tower with minions and hog rider but also Chad taking out the tower with the giant in that third battle. This time Caleb defending with a cannon instead of an inferno tower. And probably that was the reason why Chad could take out the tower. Unfortunately we missed the beginning of this battle. And now Caleb drops the three musketeers. What a brutal brute force attack against the tower. But Chad is able to defend and his mini P.E.K.K.A all alone. Now there is a giant going with the mini P.E.K.K.A going for the king tower. Distracted by the Valkyrie. Valkyrie fighting against the giant. Doing slow damage to the giant. The giant going for the king tower right now. Doing damage to that king tower. And what is Caleb up to? He's just waiting. Dropping elixir pump on the map. And Chad is all about attack, he drops another prince going for the Valkyrie and he stabs the Valkyrie and kills her really quickly. And there are the minions killing the prince and Chad doesn't have arrows. And so the wizard is all alone, but now there's a mini P.E.K.K.A wizard attack. Both of them frozen, attacked with the cannon, Caleb really battling with a different deck here in the third battle and that may have surprised Chad. And there are the three musketeers again doing a huge amount of damage but really nice count look how the guards actually are able to take out those three musketeers really quickly and there's another hog rider push poison most successful of course in tournaments uh, part of the trifecta deck the poison and the hog rider and actually poisoning the right tower and with only 22 seconds to go, that's a huge pressure there on Chad. Chad on the attack with another giant. Uh, countered very nice with those minions. And now the minions attacking the king tower. 8 seconds to go. And I think Chad here sees that he has no way to win this battle anymore. It's over. Match over. And with this battle and that very nice change of th uh, push... A uh, very nice change of deck into a pushing deck with that three musketeers. Caleb made it and is the first finalist in this tournament. Now in the second semi-final we have Ollie against Neon Ghost. And Ollie starts off with a Valkyrie Hog Rider push which is countered with a cannon and a musketeer. And also the poison. Poison just going against the Musketeer and the Valkyrie and very very few damage done to that tower. Really nice defense there by Neon and now Neon drops his Hog Rider but is also countered with a cannon. And But his Hog Rider at least goes for the Elixir Pump and the Valkyrie almost hits the tower but not quite. And then there is a Musketeer all alone, all alone that little Musketeer walking over there. But I think Neon has an advantage here because he has two elixir pumps on the map right now. He's a little bit, little bit, he's a little bit behind in, in uh, health on his towers. But he's ahead in elixir because of those two pumps. He's building up elixir really fa fast. He drops another musketeer. A nice trifecta push there with Valkyrie. Hog Rider, Musketeer and Poison and that Hog Rider will never reach the tower and the Musketeer distracted with the Valkyrie and the Musketeers against the Musketeers and not a single shot hit the tower. Again a very nice defense by Oli A, really how you have to do it. And what is funny in this battle here, it's basically two standard trifecta decks battling each other. So this is really how to play Trifecta against Trifecta. And for both of them, really nice battle so far. There is another Hog Rider push, but th this time actually Oli, Oli's Hog Rider hit the tower. And Neon, all about attack, goes for the other tower. Again, there is that cannon distracting the Hog Rider. And all of those attacking units get killed. Again, a very nice defense. Most damage done by the poison spell so far. I actually think all of the damage to Ollie's tower has been done by the poison so far. 
Again, the cannon is ready to distract the Hog Rider. Musketeer defense, really nice. No damage done. And Ollie is on the push with the Hog Rider. Again, there is the cannon. So both of them play Trifecta exactly the same way. And none of them actually hits the tower. It's all about the poison hitting the tower. But there, look at this. The Musketeer actually doing shots. And Ollie could hit, could score some shots at the tower. Another push. And this time the Hog Rider hits the tower. Neon was able to do damage. And also the Musketeer. No, the Musketeer died. It didn't go for the tower. And it's still pretty even. And there is, again, there is the cannon. That's really how you have to defend Trifecta. And how to attack this Trifecta. It's really funny how they mirror each other's game. Both of them play Trifecta exactly the same way. And it's very small differences that will decide on who wins this battle. Now again, the Hog Rider hits the tower together with the poison. Neon was able to get to that tower and that tower is really low in health. And if Ollie is able, if, if Neon is able to defend what he is, that Hog Rider didn't reach the tower. Neon will win. He's poisoning the tower right now and there you go. It's 1-0 for Neon. Oh, little confusion there. That was actually their second battle. And with that battle, Neon made it into the finals. And we're right in the finals now. With Caleb against Neon Ghost. Caleb against Neon Ghost. I don't know whether Caleb actually knew that Neon was using Trifecta. Or he could also have changed the deck. You don't really know. And both of them just waiting here. Taking their time. Trying to make the other do an attack to counter. <laughs> Poker. <laughs> It's like a poker game. None of them attacking right now. Still taking their time. And I don't know why he zaps Neon's King Tower. Because that will actually make Neon's King Tower defend as well. And there is a push. Neon pushing with a balloon and barbarians. The balloon going for that Inferno Tower against Caleb. But yeah, most damage done to the Inferno Tower and not to the towers. And uh, now there's coming some movement into this battle still. Both of them very careful. Maybe also a bit nervous in the finals. I don't know. I'd definitely be very nervous if I reach the finals in one of those bracket tournaments. But usually I'm just hosting them. I'm not playing be because I can't play and host uh, those kind of tournaments at the same time. There is a giant dropped by Neon approaching slowly. Caleb probably thinking on how to defend. And what he actually does, he pushes with a Hog Rider, but Neon has the Barbarians ready to take out the Hog Rider, but they are poisoned really fast. And the poison again doing damage to the left tower. In the meantime, the giant has reached the right tower and is, is, is able to get some really nice shots at that tower. And the tower is at 1600 already. And we're already in the double elixir phase because those guys have taken so much time until they attacked. And now it's a giant balloon push. Really an interesting deck with the giant balloon. Something you don't see that often, but I feel like it's on Vogue. Somehow I've seen it very often recently. It, it gets more and more on Vogue somehow. And again, some damage done. Very small damages. Win battles. This time Neon counters with an Inferno Tower. Remember that Caleb was actually using the Inferno Tower before. But now it's Neon using the Inferno Tower to counter Caleb. And those Barbarians attacking the left tower. Valkyrie for the defense. The Valkyrie pretty well able to defend against that push. And we're going into overtime very soon the fireball going for the hog rider i don't know whether that was a good choice because actually the hog rider and valkyrie reached the tower couldn't do a lot of damage but they were there and there is the inferno tower by caleb going for the giant burning it down again melting it like butter in the hot summer sun and the valkyrie all alone against barbarians hog rider doing damage caleb a little bit ahead here in that first battle against Neon. And the Ice Spirit actually countering those minions really well. And already full elixir again. So they <laughs> always full elixir. That's one of the advantages of those kind of decks here. Uh, none of them using the usual Trifecta deck. 
Notice how Caleb does not have a musketeer in his deck. And Neon doing another giant balloon push. Really an interesting combo there. Both of them counter with an Inferno Tower. Uh, melting the Hog Rider. No, not really able to melt the Hog Rider this time. And the Hog Rider going for the tower at 290 now. And now he's poisoning. He's going all in. Trying to poison that tower. <laughs> trying to take it down at any rate. Somehow he must take down that tower. Probably waiting for the next poison spell. Because he's sure with the poison spell he'll be able to take it down. The balloon going against the inferno. But now the balloon approaches. No. The balloon drops. He taps and poisons. And there's the first victory for Caleb. Cold blooded play. And a nice victory for Caleb. Awesome battle. And there we're in the second final match. And Caleb actually said in the chat afterwards that he woke the King Tower by mistake. So it was a mistake, but still he won that battle. And now he's facing Neon again. Both of them asked whether they're allowed to change decks uh, in the chat. And I don't know whether they did. But yeah, of course, I said, you can change the deck between all the battles. Both of you, the winner and the loser, may change their decks if they want to try something else. Uh, Neon coming again with a giant balloon attack. Nice tap there, slowing down both of them, balloon and the giant. And actually, the Inferno Tower is still up and balloon and giant is down. So that's a bad start for Neon. Those barbarians now walking all alone. Kind of a waste of elixir, minions taking them out really quickly. And now Caleb has an elixir advantage there. He's pushing with a hog rider ice spirit for that tower. And the hog rider able to do damage. And a lot of damage. The tower is at 1300 now. And those minions will actually be taken out by the right tower. That's something you should always pay attention to. If they are already weak on health, don't defend. Because the tower may take them out before they actually reach the tower. <laughs> and yeah, there Neon goes. Both of them are laugh laughing here. Really fair play in this tournament. And there comes a rocket. The rocket hitting the Valkyrie and the tower. Probably that's why he was laughing, because he knew he has that rocket ready. And there's another standard Valkyrie Hawk Rider push. He's fireballing the troops behind, he's putting up an Inferno Tower for defense. But the Hawk Rider poison hits the tower, and the Hawk Rider is able to take the right tower down. And going for the King Tower, so that is a bad start for Neon. He was really trying something new there with the rocket. And with that deck, he stuck to most of his deck. I think I'm not really sure I should, uh, w whether he changed it or not. But he, he stuck to the giant and balloon strategy there. But he doesn't hit the tower with that one. And Caleb pushing. Actually, Caleb would only need to defend here to win the tournament. But yeah, he's about fair play. And he's pushing against the left tower again. Did a lot of damage there. And Neon... Tries to attack with another giant, but of course, the Inferno Tower is ready and there are now two Inferno Towers on the map. Really melting, melting those, that giant like bother. And also Neon defending with an Inferno Tower, but with only six seconds to go, this battle is over. And that means Caleb won the bracket tournament. Awesome play, congrats for winning the No Legendaries Bracket Tournament. And here it is, the full bracket uh, with all those 16 players in the tournament. Thanks to all of you who were part of this awesome tournament. It was a lot of fun and I really hope Supercell will also implement a ways of bracket tournaments and also a ways to rule out certain cards because I also think it was a lot of fun because we could Choose not to use legendaries in the tournament. Thanks to everyone that was here. I hope you enjoyed this tournament summary. The bracket tournament with no legendaries. Please comment and like the video. And for more awesome videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you guys in the next tournaments and on my YouTube channel. And stay awesome. Level 8, those are the worst, you know it, you know it, I always fail again, no, I switched to the Hog Rider deck by mistake, no.
No! I didn't want to use the half right attack. That's an awful mistake. No! 